Hey everybody, Trisha Helton here, and I am going to show you a quick little tip and um, technique on how to sear chicken or meat, okay? Um, what I'm gonna be using is our 12 inch non-stick stainless steel um, skillet, our new cookware to our line. And what is awesome about our non-stick stainless steel cookware is, is that it has all the features of stainless and it's non-stick. Okay, it's a combination of, there's this mesh um, grid down here at the bottom, and this is great for the nonstick, and it doesn't, you can then sear your meat on here, and so you can create then your fond, so you can have your sauces and your gravy, which is not possible in your traditional nonstick skillets, okay? Cleanup is easy too, you just wipe this out here, and you can hand wash it or throw it into your dishwasher, and you can even use your favorite utensils, including metal in it. Okay, so how do we want to sear um, chicken? And I got my chicken over here and the rub I want to use. You can use either um, salt and pepper or your favorite rub, it doesn't matter. But the key is that you definitely want to get your pan nice and hot before you put your meat in there, okay? Um, before I really knew this, I would turn on my pan and throw my meat in there and wondering why it didn't turn out like I thought it would. Okay, um, obviously that's okay to do if you have beef, um, but we don't have beef. This is chicken and we want to sear it. Okay, all right, so while that's heating up, I'm going to go ahead and open up my chicken, get it going out of the package here. And I am using um, a Dijon rub um, on my chicken thighs. Um, because it's what I'm going to be um, making for dinner tonight is the certain recipe that calls for that rub. So we just want to open up, you know, get the chicken out so it's all good and flat. I mean, obviously if you're using breast, chicken breast, this is not going to be a big deal. You know, it's all going to be nice and flat already. And if your chicken breasts are really thick, um, something you can do is use our closing cut and cut those in half you know, long ways, and so your breasts won't be then that thick. So they're gonna cook, um, won't take as long to cook, and an even cook as well. Okay, so I got those prepped and ready to go, and I'm gonna add a little bit of oil um, to my skillet. Which is something you want to do. And, um, you know, it says usually it takes three to five minutes for your pan to heat up. Um, a good test that I have done um, in the past, and you get used to it after you've done it a while, is just kind of put your hand over the skillet. And you can tell um, when that skillet is um, good and hot. And boy, you know, you can see how nice that is. You know, it's just getting ready to sear some chicken, okay? So I'm going to go and put some rub on. Sprinkle that onto my chicken thighs here. And again, any rub you use, it's up to you, or if nothing else, you can just use salt and pepper. Okay, and um, what the process is of searing, what it does is after you sear your chicken, and I'll, while it's searing, I'll tell you something else, but what the results is after you sear your chicken is after you take the meat out, it leaves all those particles in there, all the bits of food, and that is loaded with flavor, okay? And then you would add some like white wine or broth to that, um, fond that's in the bottom and it's great to go ahead and make your sauces and gravy I mean it is just delicious to do um, with your searing you know with the fond okay so this feels nice and hot so I am going to go ahead and add my chicken and you can hear how it sizzles in there which means it's good and hot okay and something that you want to remember when you sear is once you put the meat there, you leave it. Don't move it around, don't poke on it, you know, that kind of stuff, okay? Which, for me, was always um, something I did because I'm kind of an impatient cook, okay? So while that's searing, it's building that um, sear underneath the chicken. I am gonna sprinkle the top with the other side of my rub. And too bad this video can't let you smell this because it smells delicious. Okay, 
So we're going to leave that set, okay, um, four to six minutes before we flip it. Okay, so I'm actually going to pause this and not make you sit here for four to six minutes. So I will be right back. Okay, so we're back. The chicken has been sitting in the pan for about four minutes. I am going to go ahead and flip it now. I haven't been poking it around and moving it. And you can see how nice and brown, whoop, how nice and brown the sear is on there. Now I'm going to do the second side for a few minutes too. The chicken will not be completely cooked yet though. So um, actually the recipe that I'm doing, um, it will finish off cooking this particular recipe in the oven. So, and that's what's great about our pan too, is um, they can go from the stove top and you can finish a recipe in the oven if you want to as well. Okay, so while that's sitting in there, just for a few minutes before I remove the chicken completely, um, and then I'll show you the fawn that's in the bottom. But other things that you can sear are um, shrimp, tofu, or even steak. Okay, and um, this pan is so great and easy to do. I actually have never seared chicken before until I had this pan. So um, I really love this cooking technique and how I have the ability to do it now. And it's very simple and easy and anybody can do it. You can do it too. So, um... Let's see, I'll make sure I'm, there's my impatience chicken in, right? So, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the chicken. And all these nice little particles in the bottom, I'm going to leave in there. And then I'm adding um, the rest of my recipe, finishing it off to make this nice gravy and sauce at the bottom of my pan. All that stuff is wonderful that's in there because it's going to flavor our sauce um, for our recipe. So in general, that's how we sear some chicken. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you.